learn about famous artist Frida Kahlo. As well, I'm going to be giving you five Frida Kahlo art lesson ideas in this podcast episode that you can use to create art projects with your students in your classroom. No matter if your kids are primary or elementary, middle school, or are in high school, I have some amazing Frida Kahlo art project ideas that you can use and I will even give you links to just some of the art resources that you can use this year in your classroom from my store. However, I have lots of ideas so let's dive into it and you can grab your notepad and start jotting them down so that way you can have a head start on ideas for planning your year. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Hey, Artastic Nation and all my lovely friends. Well, I'm so glad you could join me. Now, before we begin this episode, I just want to let you know that my membership site, The Artastic Collective, is currently open for enrollment. Now the enrollment period is time sensitive. You see it's only going to be open for another couple weeks and then you won't have an opportunity to join in on this fabulous deal until the next time it launches. That is a long way away for getting your hands on a sweet art teaching resource deal. To better support our teachers, I created the Artastic Collective. With the Artastic Collective Art Resource Library membership for art teachers, my mission is to provide you with prepared art lessons, resources, and activities that will allow you to free up your time and live your life, whether that means traveling, pursuing your hobbies, or spending time with your family. It will provide you with fully planned art lessons and resources that cover standards and include assessments and rubrics, and these will be given to you monthly. You should be able to be an instructor or a teacher and be able to have the time to live life. With this membership, you will receive teaching ideas, inspiration, and guidance to help you navigate and problem solve in your classroom or studio. This membership will give you the freedom to create art with kids, live your life, and will help you engage your students with art lessons. This membership is intended for elementary and middle school teachers. Find my membership at artasticcollective.com or you can simply search it in Google or your favorite web browser. Remember, the membership is only open for enrollment for a couple weeks and then it will close until the next time it launches. So make sure you visit the site right now and join this opportunity for getting your hands on hundreds of misertastic art resources before this opportunity is gone. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? Frida Kahlo. So who is Frida Kahlo and what did she do? So in the early years, Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo was born to a German father and a Euro-American mother in July of 1907. And she always enjoyed art from a very young age. She used to draw sketches and drawings in her notebook when she was very little. And I'm sure you can definitely relate to that. And although she wanted to be, she never wanted to be an artist, life hit her very differently at a young age and circumstances became so out of control that she just had to do it. She wanted to become a doctor when she was little so she got enrolled in Escula National Preparatory School, one of Mexico's leading schools. She was a very intelligent girl and then at the age of 16 she already learned how to speak English, Spanish, and German. In her senior year, she was traveling in a bus when she got hit by a trolley car and got seriously injured. And this was one of the most devastating accidents that really just altered her life. She went through 30 procedures and remained in hospital for three months. This was the period when she started painting really seriously. And in 1926, she completed her first self-portrait painting. 
Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter who, of course, is very well known for her self-portraits and vibrant colors. Most of her paintings, or almost all of them, reflected pain and suffering. She is also celebrated in Mexico for her attention and representation of Mexican and indigenous culture among feminists. Magical realism and surrealism was very much reflected in her work, so in this regard, Kahlo is considered as one of the symbols of hope, power, and woman empowerment and strength. As we know, Kahlo was best known for her self-portraits. She created around 200 artworks, among of them, 143 were paintings, from which 55 were self-portraits. When she was asked about why she focuses on self-portraits, she replied, Because I am so often alone. Because I am the best. I am the subject I know best. In 1946, she was awarded National Prize of Arts and Sciences by Ministry of Public Education because while she was in hospital, she also painted biological images and thus got related to science. Her painting Self-Portrait with Thorns in Necklace and Hummingbird is her best and widely celebrated work so far. She got a lung failure and died at the age of 47, but even when she was very sick, she arrived at her first exhibition, of course, in an ambulance. Her work was and has since been inspirational to many, even after her passing. So importance of art making. So art can be a form of escapism, reflection, and a way of understanding and managing our emotions. Of course, this is what Frida Kahlo did with her own artworks. It allows you to look inward and discover that which lies within and is out of reach from the surface of our skin. This is why it's so important for us to teach arts to our kids, along with such artists such as Frida Kahlo, that are truly an inspiration for us all and teach us the lessons and tools we need to deal with life. A lot of kids can be inspired from artists such as Frida Kahlo and can see themselves in her. We can see how she used her art to deal with the pain and suffering and just different emotions and moments that she had to go through and deal with. So let's look at five ideas for Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo art lessons for kids that you can use in your classroom. I'm going to just pause for a moment and just make sure that you grab yourself a notepad or something to write on and a pen. Make sure you're ready to listen. And we're going to dive in on five ideas. You can jot these ideas down and plan them later for your own kids in your classroom in a way that best suits the needs of your diverse and individual students. And for a couple of them, I have links to the resources that you can grab yourself that are already pre-planned. All right, so grab that notebook and a pen or something to write with. And here we go. Okay, so the first is primary directed drawings. So the first idea I have is that if you're teaching primary students, either kindergarten, grade one, grade two, or grade three, then you can definitely do directed drawings either of a Frida Kahlo artwork or a Frida Kahlo portrait with your students. Now you can even simplify it to just Frida Kahlo if you're having, if you have kindergarten or grade one, just keep it simple and make a simple Frida Kahlo portrait. Now, I often think that a lot of Frida Kahlo artworks and the subject matter that she covers is a bit too hard for younger students to understand or might not be appropriate, but you could definitely teach about Frida Kahlo and her life in an age-appropriate way and talk about her culture and just how she is an influence to others even today. And then you can show maybe a couple of artworks of hers and find some art that would be appropriate for that age and put it together in a presentation and then show your students. Afterward, you can create or do a directed drawing with your students um, in those primary age groups. Now, sometimes we think that directed drawings are to be done with just pencils and crayons or a choice of art making medium, but you can definitely use any art mediums. So you could even do a directed drawing with oil pastels and then have kids paint in the portrait with watercolor paints and encourage them to apply their own style and colors 
vibrant colors that are of their choice to allow them some choice and experimentation. And if you really want to get creative, let them sprinkle some salt on or maybe some rubbing alcohol on top afterwards or even tissue dab and just remove some of that material or alter that paint before it dries and just watch their eyes light up in excitement. This would also be a lovely and fun way to introduce Frida Kahlo to your primaries. So the next idea is doing self-portraits inspired by the art making style of Frida Kahlo. Now if you have older students, so either elementary or you can even do this with middle school or even high school for that matter, you could do self-portraits inspired by the art making style of Frida Kahlo. So you could teach your students about Frida Kahlo, again make it age appropriate and also um, sensitive to your community, your school community. So I know every every place and every school community is very different. So you make it for what works for you. So teach them about Frida Kahlo. Again, show different artworks that she created. You can explain what style of art making, art that she was making um, and what she created and what movement that her artworks fit into. You could talk to your kids about surrealism and how this art is both realistic and also surreal and dreamlike and that her self-portraits were really surrealist artworks. You can also discuss with your students um, and create class brainstorms or have group conversations uh, at each table and maybe even have like a full-size anchor chart at each table where they will collaboratively reflect, observe, and come up with some different key details or similarities between all her artworks and her style of art making that, make, that makes her art stand out from the artworks of other artists and their styles. This way, you can ask critique style questions to your students such as, what do you notice about her work? What things do you notice in her paintings? What kind of marks does she make? What kind of colors does she use? What kind of elements of art or principles of design do you notice? Is it realistic or is it abstract? What kind of other elements do you notice in her art or around her portrait? What's the first thing you notice in the painting? Are her portraits realistic or are there other things going on? What colors does she use? What do you see? So if you need to pause that and just rewind, go ahead. Or if you want the show notes for this, always just go on over to mizartastic.com or find the link to the show notes for this podcast episode in the description of this episode. But... These are just some ideas for what you could prompt your students and have them start critically thinking about the artwork and how Frida Kahlo's style really is different from others and is its own unique style. So you can have kids discuss for a while um, and once they are done discussing, maybe set a timer for like 15 minutes or like I love to put on some of those fun Google timers where you just search up, even on YouTube, if you search up like 15 minute timer, there's some really fun ones, pop that on and then let them just record and talk for 15 minutes. I suggest have each kid pick a different color. Um... Of felt marker and then they will each write with a different color and then just let them start writing within that 15 minutes. Have kids record all the different things they notice about Frida Kahlo's artwork and her style of art making and her style of mark making as well. After that you can explain to kids that they are now going to create their own self portrait. So a portrait of themselves but this is in the style of Frida Kahlo's style of making and it's their job to think about the different elements that she's included in her own portraits and how they are going to use that or add that to their own art designs or compositions. I would definitely suggest that you take a picture of each of your students 
Um, they can pose with a very Frida Kahlo-esque expression on their face and then you can print them off just even on the photocopier at school just so they have it as a reference image while they create. Okay, so that's something that you can plan especially with your older students and I think that's a great way to both talk about um, Frida Kahlo but and just her way of expressing herself and then kids who are older can see themselves in that and then think about art as a way of self-expression and exploration and just digging deep into reflections um, and understanding ourselves and who we are um, and our identities and then they can apply that to their own artworks of themselves so they can put themselves in their art that's inspired by Frida Kahlo after learning about her. All right, the next idea is doing a Frida Kahlo cartoon styled portrait. So the next thing you could do is create a portrait inspired by the Frida Kahlo artwork, the floral frame. And for this artwork, you can do kind of more of a fun cartoon style Frida Kahlo and then surround it with the floral frame. So I think this would be a fun activity that you could do with oil pastels and watercolor paints and just really have fun creating Frida Kahlo artworks in a kid-friendly way. You could definitely teach about the artist and then create a portrait of her after um, looking at some pictures online or in books of Frida Kahlo maybe. So once kids have learned about Frida Kahlo and you've taught them some artworks of hers and a little about a little bit about her life and the importance in the art world, then you can reinforce that knowledge of who Frida Kahlo is by creating a fun portrait of her inspired by her works, the floral frame. This is a bright and fun art project and you could find this art project already pre-planned in my Teachers Pay Teachers store or with your Artastic Collective membership in the Frida Kahlo bundle when it's released to you in your membership library. As always, all the links will be of this podcast um, that are mentioned that they will be available in the podcast show notes. Again, you can find that link in the description of this episode or just go to misartastic.com and then hit the podcast episodes and you'll find all my show notes there. Next, number four, is Frida Kahlo self-portrait with thorns and hummingbird necklace artwork. So for upper elementary and middle school or even for high school, you could teach and create art inspired by Frida Kahlo's portrait with thorns and hummingbird necklace. This is one of my uh, her most famous artworks and is super inspirational and I love it and I just love the creatures flying around. However, it's kind of dark. <laughs> Depending on the age of the students, you might want to adjust the artwork. So of course, we're making it inspired by artworks that she created, but I would remove the thorns and blood and just have the necklace with a hummingbird if your audience or your students are just not ready for that yet. However, if you have older students and your school culture allows it, definitely show the original artwork, talk about creating it, and being inspired by it and if they're old enough they can and it's okay then you can introduce the thorns and blood and the pain or again if you can't just exclude it uh, from the kids version of the work. I love this artwork it's super powerful and I love the flora behind her and all the beautiful animals and creatures that are included in the work. I have created this as an art lesson that is again part of my Teachers Pay Teachers store or part of the Artastic Collective Frida Kahlo bundle. And number five, the fifth idea I have is a doing a fruit still life inspired artwork um, by Frida Kahlo. So another fun way to create art inspired by Frida Kahlo without depicting the portraits of pain and suffering would be to create art inspired by some of her fruit still life works. These artworks typically show tropical fruit because of where she's from in the world and I think it's a great way to look at Mexican culture and Frida Kahlo without including some of the more painful scenes. That being said, I would definitely still teach about Frida Kahlo and her life and her style of creating and all that jazz but you can also show some of the other kinds of artworks that she created, including her fruit still lifes. These are, this is a fun way to 
uh, bring Frida Kahlo into your classroom, but also it allows the opportunity that you can create with a range of different mediums. You could explore creating still lives with layering wax crayons or layering your oil pastels, soft pastels definitely, or paints. Although I don't have a resource for this in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, I do have a fruit still life inspired Frida Kahlo artwork um, that's available with the Artastic Collective Frida Kahlo bundle. And you'll be getting that with your membership when the Frida Kahlo bundle is released to your Artastic Collective library. Otherwise, I, I highly suggest creating an art lesson on the style of still lives, but is also inspired by Frida Kahlo and it's a great way to teach both still life artworks, but also teach about Frida Kahlo all in one go. All right, my friends, I hope this inspires you to start creating some Frida Kahlo artwork, artworks with your students in your classroom. And for more information and for all the links to the resources that I mentioned in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, um, visit my podcast show notes at MsArtastic.com or you can head on over to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, and click the Artists and Art History tab or the category on the left-hand side of my store and then scroll there and look for Frida Kahlo or you can even try searching Frida Kahlo in my Teachers Pay Teachers store and find them there. Well, I truly hope you're inspired to create some Frida Kahlo art with your students this year and teach them about Frida Kahlo. Just be really true and honest with them about her life and how she used art as a beautiful means of reflection and expression and a way to truly understand herself and her own identity. Explain to students that they can take this concept and apply it to their own art making when they are creating in their sketchbooks or even their own art and just use it as a way for deep, mindful reflection. Well, I'm Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off.